Hi, it's tomato harvest time and we have lots and lots of tomatoes, mostly Romas, which are really good for cooking and also Rouge de Marmonde, uh, which is a nice table tomato but more than we can actually eat on the table. So we need to preserve these in some way to eat later in the season yeah. and one of the ways I do that is to make our own tomato sauce. And I like to make our tomato sauce without using any cane sugar. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Now the first stage is sorting the ripest of the tomatoes. And uh, I put them in the sink to give them a wash. Anything that is damaged is first priority to be processed. Anything that is still firmer can stay for another day. The sink's full. I haven't emptied the box yet. Too many in there. So I've got to start cutting them up. The process I use uh, is fairly simple. With a tomato like this, with my mayonnaise, I split them in half before cutting the them out and generally taking it down to a quarter in size and you want a good knife I use this little global uh, it's a very sharp blade and just fits in the hand not too much blade around with the uh, Romas it's a much quicker process because you can just take the stem off in one move and quarter it like that so I'm going to be here for a little while now, <laughs> cutting these up. Now I have a uh, full pot of tomatoes. Um, the step I'm going to take here at this stage is to add just a small amount of Himalayan salt, probably yeah, three teaspoons, something like that. Now from experience, I know that this pot full of tomatoes is approximately 10 kilos of tomatoes. Been weighted a number of times. I'm going to add a small amount of water, uh, simply enough to stop it burning. Tomatoes are full of water, so my goal at this stage is to put that on the stove and heat it for probably 10 15 minutes to get the water to come out of it. And the salt actually assists in that process to get the liquid out. Now, a lot of recipes will call for boiling your tomato sauce or simmering it for hours, you know, up to five hours to actually reduce it and get the water out of it. To me, um, that is not only a nutritional issue, but it's also a major energy use. So what I prefer to do is a short heat, get the water out, and then actually pour that liquid off. Now, I don't waste it and drink it, uh, it's nice tomato juice, but what it does is concentrate the solids so that you've reduced it down already in a single short step uh, without using too much energy. So while the uh, tomatoes are on the stove, I'm going to prepare the other ingredients. Um, I use some apples, these are can do Bramley's, they're just what's uh, ripe at the moment, but any apples could be used. Uh, I'm only going to put those three in, a pot of sauce, a clove of, well, a bowl of garlic. This is giant Russian garlic. Technically they tell me this is not garlic but a leek. Uh, but we grow this ourselves, it grows easy, it stores well and uh, works fine. Easy to peel too, being large. And approximately a kilo of onions. Um, we don't grow those. Uh, basically onions do take up a lot of space to grow and I tend to grow higher value crops like uh, leeks and spring onions so this is one thing that is brought in um, into this recipe so I'm going to peel those, prepare them, put them through the food processor here uh, I'm using a chopping blade just to chop it up before it goes into the pot over to the pot which has now reached the stage that I'm looking for um, you'll notice that some of it is basically still uncooked 
but there is plenty of liquid in there now. Uh, the, the tomatoes are softened up and the water's come out. You don't want to cook it too much. Um, I'm simply looking to reduce the amount of liquid in it, not to remove it. You'll notice that it's come down quite a bit from the top already um, with the heat and uh, we'll pour that down further and it'll get less. So I'm going to strain that off through a colander now. juice that I've poured off and that'll make a very nice refreshing drink uh, when it's cooled down. Here is the uh, the pot now that the uh, liquid is poured off and to that we're going to add the other ingredients that have been through the food processor. Time to talk about seasoning and to reveal the secret to my sauce. It's called Easy sauce. <laughs> what this is, is a concentrated mix of vinegar and pepper, um, some clove oil and a little chilli. It's a very strong vinegar, so that what it means is that if you were just adding ordinary vinegar, you would have to add a lot more to get the same effect and you'd have a watrier result. Using this means that you have a thicker sauce. Now you can do it with ordinary vinegar, that's fine. Uh, you could add the peppers and the chilli, and I'm going to actually add more chilli because I want it hotter. Uh, but this, while it's available, is a quick and easy way. Now I'm going to add probably a cup of this to the mix. And see, if I was using vinegar, I'd probably go to two to three times that amount to get the same effect. So that can go into the pot. Turn it off. And that keeps perfectly well. I keep it in the fridge, but you know, it'll keep a whole year. Some salt. Really, tomato loves salt. This is Himalayan salt. And for that 10 kilos of tomatoes, half a cup, or close to half a cup of salt is probably necessary. Always err a little bit on the lighter side with all these uh, spices and you can always add more, you can't take it out. Now I've got a few spices here I like to put in. Some ginger and going to use probably yeah, good tablespoon of ginger and I like a little mustard in it again I'll probably go for a oh it's a little much there yeah, tablespoon mustard in there now I want this sauce to be a hot sauce so I'm going to add some more can or chili powder to it and Really, you've got to be careful with this. This stuff tends to lose its heat fairly quickly. Um, so, depending how fresh it is to how hot it will be. But I'm going to start with a teaspoon, given that I've already got some in the other. And then I'll taste it and see if I need to add more. Because if it's just um, too hot, it's hard to take it out. So those spices can go in. Sweetening is the other element. Now, looks like white sugar, doesn't it? It's not. It's xylitol. Xylitol is made from birch trees or from corn cobs and it's an alcohol sugar. If you're not familiar with xylitol, research it. Now some people are a little bit reluctant to use xylitol. They feel that uh, it's, well, because it is uh, toxic to dogs, they go, oh, I'm not sure whether humans could use it. Should have it. Um, we put a heap of onions in this sauce. Onions are, and garlic are also toxic to dogs and cats. Uh, so there's a lot of foods that humans can consume that uh, have problems in pets. 
I've gone to xylitol one because I wanted to steer away from the high sugar elements of cane sugar. Uh, xylitol has research backing up that it is good, well it actually helps prevent dental decay, uh, whereas cane sugar is, creates it. Xylitol doesn't create an insulin challenge, so if you're diabetic, it won't make you diabetic. So it also inhibits bacteria and actually going to help uh, your source key. Uh, so there's a lot of good reasons to go to xylitol. The big thing against it is that it is expensive and uh, it's going to cost you around 10 times as much as if you were using cane sugar. Uh, but dental bills are also expensive. So, to that amount, I'm going to start with around 800 grams. Not quite a kilo, so that's around about, well, just under two pounds. Get it started, taste it, you can always add more. Okay, ready? Prepare the bottles. Um, they simply need to be washed and I scold them with boiling water. Uh, it's simply a matter of boiling water, pouring it into the jars. These are old uh, Posada jars that have been reused many times. You can uh, buy new lids, eBay or somewhere like that. Leave it in a couple of minutes. Usually if I don't do a second lot, a couple of minutes in there before putting it back in and boiling it again to do more. Now I've been cooking this for about 50 minutes and uh, it's sufficiently cooked at this stage to get a, a first taste, which is a rough indicator of what it uh, is going to taste like. Um, at this stage, because it is yet not blended, I will put the stick mixer through it to get it nice and smooth. Uh, but at this stage not blended the flavor is not always the perfect indication of what it's going to be like but it gives you some idea is it hot enough is it sweet enough is it salty enough it's been cooking now for uh, over an hour I did add a little more chili cayenne and I also added about 200 grams more xylitol to sweeten it a little bit to improve the flavour. Now, I have put the stick mixer in once already to smooth it up. I'm going to now add a little guar gum to thicken it. Now, if you haven't used guar gum before, it's a thickener that works simply by mixing with moisture. It doesn't require heat and it doesn't require very much. So a spoonful like this blend it in, we'll thicken this adequately, to mix it in, simply use the stick mixer in there, uh, ready to bottle now that it's been uh, mixed up and it's nice and, and smooth, the, I, Put the uh, bottles in a container so you do tend to spill in this process. And the funnel is kind of made from a juice bottle that gives you a wider opening than a normal bottle. I am riding backwards, I am riding backwards, I can't say I am riding backwards. How old are you, Samuel? I'm three. Yes, you are, very good. Bit of noise in the back. Seat yeah. lighter works really well to uh, get it in. Now this is very hot, so you need to be careful. Remember to go deep too, because sometimes it can be a little bit uneven in its thickness. I like to fill the bottles pretty close to the top. Because they will shrink. Cap on, and that is now set to cool. It'll pull its own vacuum, and 
we'll go on with another one. This is now the completed result. We've got nine bottles of uh, sauce out of that pot. And you'll see how much it has actually come down um, as it's cooled. It's not totally cool, cold yet. It's pulled a good vacuum. Uh, with these particular lids, it's hard to see the, the curve, but it actually has got a curve on there. It's pulled down nicely. They, you can actually see in there that it's got some nice thickness to it. So it should be good sauce.